I think the first thing to say about Britain as a, as a setter of English poetry is his extraordinary ambition in choosing texts which he really wouldn't think were amenable to a musical setting. I think particularly of the first Britain songs I got to know, which were the uh, Holy Sonnets of John Donne. Um, very fierce, knotty, um, imagistic, in a sense musical, but with their own very peculiar music, um, very musical poems. You wouldn't have thought that music could add anything to them or could even cope with setting them. But he manages to do this thing of grabbing the central idea of the text, turning it into a musical idea and then driving it through each poem. And it's an incredibly powerful piece that he wrote um, in a state of high fever on his return from, from touring um, uh, uh, Europe just after the war, going to, to, to Belsen actually with, with Yehudi Menuhin. Um, so I think there's that choice of text in which he was obviously also helped by the people he worked with, his friends, by Auden early on, then by, by, by Peter Piers. I think there's also a, an intuitive thing where he could set um, English to music in a way which somehow is true to the language and doesn't give us that awful sort of singer ease sort of um, feeling or, or difficulties for the singer uh, in having to alter the vowels in order to make things work. And I think, I, I can't believe that was something he, he was actually necessarily consciously doing, sitting down and thinking, oh, do I put an E vowel here or an R vowel here? I think it was something that was completely intuitive for him. And something that was obviously helped in a way by his close relationship to Peter Pears and to other singers and his, his very close work in the English opera group.